So I'm five weeks into my 26 week project and thankfully I'm still on target to finish on time. If you didn't see my last video, I'm making a cybersecurity tower defense game where you defend a network against a series of attacks. So let's get into what I've been doing. For those who've seen my lumber mill videos, you might have seen me add the cheat bar. I took a similar approach with this game and added a bar at the top of the screen which I can use during development to carry out certain actions. This one's a little more advanced than the lumber mill one. I can actually chain commands together and pass in values which is super useful. For example, I can set the level budget with the command set budget, the budget value in brackets and the game will pass that and update the level. I also added level serialization so I can save and load a level from the command bar, but that's just backend coding so I won't go into the details of that here. Right, so next I added a collider to the nodes so that I can click and drag from the nodes to create connections. The collider extends a little beyond the node itself, that's so I can click and drag the node to move it and click on the outside to draw a connection. I got that working with the lines snapping to the colliders and here you can see all the colliders being drawn including colliders on the connections themselves that update whenever the line is adjusted. These are just basic box colliders which have their dimensions and rotations linked directly to the line. I then made it impossible to draw connections that already exist as that might cause some problems when simulating attacks which I'll get to later on in the video. Right, so it was about time to get some actual icons for the nodes themselves. As I'm limited for time on this project, I decided to get some royalty free ones from the internet for now. I found a pretty decent pack with plenty of options and of course, I had to sign up to download them. So once I'd faffed about creating an account, I downloaded the icons. And once I downloaded them, they were all black. For those not familiar with Unity, this is a problem as it means I can't recolor them in the engine itself you need white images for that. So my solution for this problem was to create a Photoshop script to automatically invert the icon colors, thus making them white. The script took a little while to run as it had to run through 380 files and export each one. Being new to Photoshop scripts, I also discovered that by not telling Photoshop explicitly to close the files, it just kept every single one open, which my computer didn't like one bit. Despite that though, it soldiered on and got every icon finished, which I added to Unity. With another week down, it was then my birthday, so I went home for the weekend and forgot to get any footage, but I got a record player, so that's cool. On my way back to Sheffield though, I managed to book a coach for the wrong day. I then had a fun adventure travelling to the other side of London until I eventually made it to King's Cross and onto my train. I won't be forgetting that mistake in a hurry. I had a wonderful weekend, but after that I was quite relieved to finally arrive back at uni and listen to some records. Right, so now I'm another year older, I started adding some different nodes to the game. I added a server, which looks like this, and an internet node, which is a threat vector so it's shown in red. The next task was quite a big one and probably the most complicated part of the coding process actually simulating attacks. The internet, for example, can spawn things like SQL injection attacks. The threat can do one of four things at each node it arrives at. Fail, infect, propagate, or evolve. In the code, each node tells the threat how it will behave. So, for example, an SQL injection attack starts at the internet, propagates to the server, evolves at the server into data corruption, then infects the database table thus completing the life cycle of the threat. This gives me loads of control over threat behavior and I've made it so this is all super easy to set up in Unity. So obviously the place to start with this was to create the threat class. I then created all the basic methods I'd defined in a text file while planning the project and got to work actually implementing that code. I then set up those threats in the nodes themselves, which as you can see, are just a series of arrays. What threats start at the node how threats behave at that node, and how threats evolve at that node. I then got the play button to trigger the simulation. And then the moment of truth, the successful threats output to the console. So as you can see here, SQL injection that started at the internet, moved to the server, evolved, and then infected the database tables. 
If that seems complicated, you're not going to have to worry about any of this when playing the game. It will illustrate it all for you as tower defense games do. As a breather, I then just spent a bit of time putting together the level completion interface, which I'll code at some other point. I've got a couple of big announcements now. I now have over two and a half thousand subs and have set up a Patreon. I've added a bunch of tiers with some pretty cool rewards, which you can check out at the link, which is in the top line of the description. So without further ado, here's my first credit for a patron. Looks like someone got in early. I really appreciate it. If you liked the video, please do subscribe. I make videos like this all the time. Thank you very much for watching.